And welcome to this edition of Baseball Central, everybody. My name is Gershaw Rabinowitz. The New York Mets have developed a number of quality prospects over the last five years. And for the first time in five years, they actually did not have a first-round draft pick because they signed Michael Kadir to a free agent contract. But their top draft pick is one of the Mets' talked-about prospects. His name is Desmond Lindsay, a second-round pick from Sarasota, Florida. It's an honor to have you on. Uh, thank you for having me here. Desmond, growing up in Sarasota, Florida, you did not watch baseball often, but you played often. Your grandmother was actually a Mets fan. Are you amazed that the Mets drafted you, having that connection to them? Uh, yeah, it's definitely a funny coincidence. And uh, honestly, I was just surprised to get the opportunity to play, seeing that I tore my hamstring uh, going into my senior year. So it's definitely a blessing. You mentioned about tearing your hamstring. What type of effect does that have on a player? Do you have to compensate more because you have that type of injury? Uh, I definitely have to stretch more now, which I wasn't used to. Pretty much have to treat my legs like... <laughs> Like, I'm an old man, so uh, a lot more uh, stretching before and after games and just a lot more stuff that I have to do to uh, take care of my legs in order to make sure it doesn't happen again. And you use your legs a lot. You were a three-sport athlete. You played baseball, basketball, and football. When did you decide to pursue a career in baseball? Uh, I stopped playing basketball and football pretty much after my sophomore year and decided to just focus on baseball, and that was because I just wanted to make sure that I didn't get hurt. Uh and uh, I didn't get hurt, and that would take away from uh, my baseball, but <laughs> I got hurt anyways. <laughs> Initially, you were a corner infielder before moving to the outfield. How does a player prepare to play another position, and what steps did you take to adjust the nuances of playing the outfield? Uh, it was definitely a lot of practice, uh, getting with all the coaches and trainers I could in order to just get any sort of tips and stuff on making my outfield play better and it's and after pretty much getting the basics down it's just repetition and getting as many reps and practice in the outfield as I can in order to get better. What type of basics do you work on? Is that just routes? Is that just trying to catch the baseball, learning how to play certain hitters? Yeah, it's just learning how to play certain hitters in certain uh, situations and counts in the game and uh, work on the routes and how to read the ball off the bat and where the ball will tail if it's a righty or lefty and the way the wind's blowing and stuff like that. After being drafted in the second round, you chose to turn pro, your forego, a commitment to North Carolina. How agonizing a decision like that for a high school player and can a player take horses during the offseason after signing a pro deal? Uh, yeah, uh, that was part of my contract with the Mets that I was able to uh, they would pay for four years of college. But um, going into the draft, I, it was a pretty easy decision. I'd already decided, uh, depending on obviously what round I got chosen, which would uh, determine if I went to college or decided to forego that and turn professional. Coming out of high school, you got drafted pretty high in the second round. As I mentioned, the first pick from the Mets. Were you surprised that you went that high? Uh, yeah, I was surprised I went that high. I had thought that after tearing my hamstring that that was pretty much it, that I'd be going to college. The year before being drafted, you participated in the Metropolitan Baseball Classics run by the Mets Scouting Department. What exactly is that tournament, and how did that experience help you become familiar with the organization itself? Um, well, going into the tournament, obviously, I had no idea that I would be drafted by the Mets, but it was definitely a fun opportunity. That was the first time I'd ever gotten to play in a big league ballpark, so that was fun. And then uh, leading into the tournament, they had a big uh, meeting with, uh, I think, Tommy Tanis was there, and they just uh, went over the Mets' um, farm team and everything and uh, I mean it was just a great experience. You had another great experience in early June after you were drafted. You spent a week in New York City visiting it, took a game in City Field, you saw the clubhouse, signed a contract in the suite in City Field. What was that experience like for you and did you receive any advice from any players or coaches from the Mets? Um, I didn't meet any players or coaches because uh, right after that game they were on a they had a way stand somewhere. I don't remember where, but uh, it was definitely a fun experience, and I was just soaking it all in. And actually, I'd strep throat that week, so uh, <laughs> it was a little tough, but I had a great time. The Mets have had 18 players who have played for the Brooklyn Cyclones play in the major leagues this season. You just were called up to the Brooklyn Cyclones. You're playing your first week with them. What does it mean for you to be able to join a team with such tradition like that in Brooklyn? Um, it's just an awesome experience. I'm happy that they gave me the opportunity to play here and to uh, face better competition. And uh, I mean, it's just awesome. 
I'm glad to be out here. I'm glad to be playing, and hopefully uh, I can help contribute and maybe make help them make a playoff push. And you mentioned about the playoff push. Is it difficult coming in with maybe about two weeks to go in a four-team race the way it is in the New York Penn League, not knowing any pitchers, not familiar with anybody here, and then being thrust in the spotlight like this? Uh, yeah, it's definitely difficult and it's different, but I mean, I already feel a lot more comfortable than I did yesterday, so after a couple of games, I think I'll be fine. What is the biggest culture shock that a player experiences when they play minor league baseball for the first time? Uh, definitely going from being in a small town in Florida and playing in the GCL in front of maybe two fans a game and to uh, going to New York and playing in front of thousands of fans here. That was probably the biggest thing for me. That was uh, It wasn't surprising because I knew it was going to be like this, but uh, it was definitely... Uh, it was definitely a shock. Did you anticipate seeing this big of a crowd they, that they draw six, seven, eight thousand here in Brooklyn, and that this is one of the most celebrated minor league teams in all of professional baseball? Well, I I had known about it because that's what everyone talks about in the GCL because that's where all the minor leaguers start out from high school. So it's definitely a place that everyone wants to make. So uh, it's talked about a lot. So I kind of knew what to expect, but uh, when I got here, it was definitely different. And now you should be here for the rest of the season and. Hopefully this is just one step as you make your trip towards the major leagues with the Mets, and it's an honor to have you on, and thanks for being here. Thank you for having me.